Welcome! I know it has been quite a long time since I last uploaded a video, but I will try to upload uh, videos a little bit more frequently in the future. So today we'll talk about order books. So to be more, sp to be more specific, we will talk about the order book on the Excel Ledger. So as you know, the Excel Ledger has a native integrated DAX, so decentralized exchange, um, and there are multiple platforms which did integrations for that decentralized exchange. So generally speaking, if you want to, if you trade on the XRP Ledger, it doesn't matter which platform you use, you can do the trades on X on, on uh, XRP Toolkit, on Sologenic, or also <clears throat> in a DAX trade up in some or just directly in some, it does not matter, it all trades on, with the same order book because the trade happens on the XRP Ledger. So there's no way of getting like special rates on certain platfor platforms. This, so yeah, that's first off important to understand. But how does a market get created? A market can get created in multiple ways, but a very popular way of establishing market is with an order book. But for example, also which is seen quite oftenly is in the DeFi space, so especially uh, built on ETH, uh, so-called liquidity pools, where you have just a pool of two assets which should be equal the same amount and it be more or less um, like equaling the, to the same amount by, well, by arbitrage, so on other platforms. But this is not what we are here to talk about today. We will talk about the order book. And uh, if we have a look at the order book, right now I'm looking at a trading pair from Euro to XRP. I could, for example, also change it to, X well, let's do as US dollars to XRP. So I'm just going to switch it. And what? how does this market more or less exist? And we can see here that we've got a market exists out of buy and sell orders. There's somebody saying I'm willing to buy a certain amount at a certain price, and there are people willing to say, I, uh, so here up on, on the top, there are people saying I'm willing to sell uh, XRP at a certain price, and there are people saying I'm willing to buy um, XRP at a certain price. And Oh, my mistake, I just mixed it up, sorry. Uh, on the, fir the first thing is what people want to, uh, the first p thing is what you get or sell, so what you buy or sell. So in this case, there are people willing to sell a US dollar for a certain amount of XRP, and there are people willing to buy US dollars for a certain amount of XRP. Uh, yeah, right. And when you now want to enter this market, for example, let's say you've got XRP, let's say you want to buy US dollars, then you would, ha you would need to find somebody who's willing to sell US dollars to you. In this case, it would be the first offer up here. But this per person is willing to sell, uh, well, this person might be accumulated, is willing to sell, um, is willing to sell, um, 14,000 US dollars, uh, but if you buy more, uh, and the total amount is like 17,000. So if you buy more than that, you would get a, uh, uh, you would have to pay more. So obviously because there, the, there's only so much volume in this sell offer. And if you, if, if you afterwards, so let's say if we want to buy one US dollar, then you would have to pay 1.20 um, XRP. But if you now want to sell that US dollar back to XRP, you would only get 1.19. So you would, you would get less. And the difference between the sell orders and the buy orders is called the spread. And uh, the larger the spra spread, the worse, more or less. And also if you're in small markets, always look at the spread. This is very important because there might be somebody saying, well, uh, so the, 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 the cheapest sell offer might be at, for example, let's say 500 XRP. So somebody's saying, well, I'm willing to, to sell this token for 500 XRP. Uh, but there, then suddenly there are only a few people willing to buy this token at a lower amount. So uh, at 100, for example, so meaning that you would immediately s uh, buy a certain token, but not be able to sell it, or you would uh, immediately have to sell for a fifth of the price if you want to go back to the asset you paid with. So this is always look at the spread. If it's, if it's more than hundred percent, then be very careful. Anything else to highlight there? Um, Right, so on XRP Ledger, there are multiple tokens and you can trade more or less any token to any other token. You can just go, for example, you can exchange, I don't know, like XRP to ELS or ELS to XRP. So you can just trade, change the trading pair. It just means the first thing what you have here is the asset which is being bought or sold in exchange for the asset on the right side. So we've got a base and a counter. Uh, right, and 
anything else to highlight here, uh, these order books uh, determine the price uh, by having so-called buy and sell limit orders. So there are lots of people sell saying are willing to buy or sell ELS at a certain price of XRP. So these orders are not filled immediately. So they're being placed and they'll just live there. But for example, if I would come right now and say, well, I want to buy uh, 1,400 XRP worth of ELS, then the market would immediately move up to 0 0.067 because all these orders would be eaten up by me. So if you if you go to Solgenic and highlight a certain level, it some uh, it aggregates it. So you can see here there's the first order. If I would buy this, if I would uh, buy uh, ELS worth of 0 0.00019 XRP, then this order would be gone and so on. If it would be buying with with um, 1,500 XRP ELS, then the price would move, all these orders would be gone. And the price, well, the price would move up more or less because the price is nothing else than the lowest sell order. Like the price is just whatever, some, uh, whatever price, like the, the lowest sell order, whatever price someone's willing to sell. That's more or less what is being used for the price. And yeah, this is more or less how, how it all works. And you can also see like uh, the bars. So the longer the bar, the bigger uh, the sell order, meaning that it's harder to get through those. So if it's just these smaller, if it's just these bars with less uh, filling, then you know it's easier to buy this up because it's just less well more, less sell pressure. But these bigger ones, then you would need a lot of XRP to get price moving up. And the same goes for moving down. For example, if it would be selling ELS worth of, let's say 4,700 XRP at a price of 0 0.65. So you have, would have to aggregate all the prices and average it more, uh, I suppose. Or, or well, you ha would have to calculate it even better. So it's not true actually, but yes, yeah, so let's say somebody's selling about 6,000 uh, XRP worth of ELS. Then, um, then you can see that, that the market would go to 0 0.0645. 0 .0 so it would eat a lot of buy orders. So this is more. This is how these order books works. Uh, this is how these order books work. And uh, yeah, this is this basic principle. I just wanted to give you a grasp on and just show a little bit how it all works. So the key takeaways should be, uh, yeah, you should definitely look at the spread. If the spread is very high, then definitely be careful. So if I've heard of stories of people uh, like buying a pre-sale. So, uh, well, there are also lots of scams going on where you do a pre-sale, where you buy in, but there's nobody else willing to buy it then. You know, like they, they, they're selling a token, for, let's say, for example, they're selling a token for 500 XRP, but then there's nobody willing to buy the token for like 400 XRP or anything. Like then, then literally you're the value, you have, so what you've sold, if there's no market on the buy side, then yeah, then you were stuck with the token. Nobody else is willing to buy it. So yeah, there would be definitely a problem. So you should definitely look at that or look out for that. Um, anything else to highlight here? Um, right. Then also, it doesn't matter which platform you use, you always get the best price. So whatever you place, so whatever is available at the time of execution, the best price is being tried to match. So this is so it doesn't matter if you use XRP Toolkit or Solgenic or any other platform. It sets uh, sets it at the right price. It tries to fill it, and if you well, if it's your turn and enough liquidity is there, then the order is fully filled. It might be the case that your order is partial filled, or it might be even the case that uh, that your order is not filled at all and the order just dies. It depends. Like uh, now, it would de it depends more like what kind of um, transaction is being used in the background. And yeah, this is more or less the core principle of order books, how that all works. We talked about the spread, we talked about uh, liquidity, more or less also about how big buy and sell limit orders are. So these buy and sell limit orders are, um, like I said, right now active, and if someone buys them up, they're gone. Also very important to understand is that if you place a buy limit or buy, buy sell, uh, well, or if you place a sell limit order, then the owner reserve is being increased. So, so, the, so sorry, I mean the minimum reserve is being increased by the owner reserve. And currently owning an object in XRP Ledger locks up to XRP, meaning that if you ha have an active buy or sell limit order, your minimum, so your base reserve, you know, uh, will be increased by two XRP. So, and you get them back as soon as the order is filled or you cancel the order. Uh, like I said, it's not even taken away from you. It's just locked more or less, okay? So this is not like somebody's taking it from you or this is not a fee or anything. It's just what is being locked up at the XRP Ledger for you having an object stored there. Right, so that's it for this video. I hope I was able to 
make the idea of the order book a little bit more clear to you. Hopefully you now also understand the decentralized exchange a little bit more. And uh, yeah, with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.